Does your data need to be wrangled? I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Adam Wilson. He's the CEO at Trifacta and Chief Data Wrangler. Welcome, Adam. Thanks for having me, Tanya. Great to be here. What does Trifacta do? So Trifacta is a leading provider of data wrangling uh, technology. So we're helping uh, end users who have business context in their heads get eyes on data early in a process and do the structuring, shaping, cleansing, and transforming on their own. Many say that data is the number one natural resource for, mo for modern businesses. Why is that? Well, I think increasingly people understand that they compete on information as much as the goods and services that they provide. And so for a lot of customers that we work with, um, it's really critical to them that they tap into the data that they have at their disposal. And unfortunately, for most organizations, they actually use less than 1% of, of the data that's at, um, within their enterprise. And so we're really helping them to try to get, uh, to get more productive with the increasing diversity uh, and scale of the data that they're contending with. Okay, Adam, what is data wrangling and why does data need to be wrangled? Well, it's really interesting because if you think about it, you know, there's been this impedance mismatch in the data supply chain that's grown up over the last uh, number of decades. Um, increasingly, we're telling end users that they need to be more data driven. Unfortunately, um, the number of people that are qualified to take data from uh, that, that's raw and to make it uh, fit for purpose um, is, is a small number of people, uh, technical people within an organization. So, there, you know, there may be something like, you know, two to 300,000 proper data scientists on the planet. There may be six to 800,000 proper data engineers on the planet, but there's literally hundreds of millions of knowledge workers. And so what you're finding is that, that increasingly you want to try to enable the people who know the data best to do the work to have them get eyes on data early in a process with context in their heads and do the structuring, the shaping, the cleansing, the transforming on their own um, so that they can actually get to insights much faster. And so when we went out and we talked to end users and we asked them about these problems and challenges they face, the words they used were not transformation, or they were not words like ETL, they used words like wrangle, stitch, munge. Uh, and so we've embraced the vernacular of the end user um, and, and really are trying to create an experience for them that allows them to do a lot of, uh, of this work on their own um, and to do this in a, in a much more kind of democratized way so that we're democratizing production of these data assets, not just consumption. What role does machine learning and ultimately artificial intelligence play in a data organization? Yeah, well, what's interesting for us is that you know, a lot of people are trying to get sort of AI from data. We're actually trying to apply AI to data. Um, so, you know, we think that every data set's not a new data set. You know, odds are we've seen something like it before. And is there a way to automate some of the more complex things that are uh, going on in that data? So can, what can we infer from the data? What can we do to you know, speed up the process of, of uh, improving the quality of that data, improving the consistency, conformity, and completeness of that data? Um, so, um, so a lot of this is, is really around, um, you know, trying to, uh, to improve uh, the ability to go quickly from something that is inherently, you know, kind of big and messy and make it, you know, much more comprehensible to, uh, to end users. But there's a period where if you can't guess with a high degree of accuracy, we don't try. And what we'll instead do is allow the user to give us hints as to what they're most interested in. And then based on those hints, come back with recommendations and suggestions that they could use to try to clean up the data. Um, and then as they pick those suggestions, they see immediate previews of what the data would look like if they apply that, um, that specific rule um, or, and, and apply it in the form of a recipe. Uh, and so that way you're actually able to, um, to now generalize what the user is uh, after and come back uh, to them with something that they can uh, use to uh, speed up the process uh, for, for getting the data you know, into a form that they can make use of regardless of what their downstream consumption is, whether it's, you know, business intelligence tools, uh, machine learning algorithms, um, you know, standard reporting, um, or even, you know, migrating the data into a new application. To what degree is human involvement required in cleaning and curating of data? Will humans always have a hand in data prep? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, you know, we, we're firm believers that human in the loop is critical. Um, there is a point at which, you know, context matters uh, in this process. And 
having uh, an end user, again, get eyes on data and actually make some decisions or determination around you know, what good is, um, you know, we think is really, really critical. So while we think that taking an algorithmic approach is, uh, uh, and, a, and using machine learning in this process is an essential enabler, you know, we do believe that, um, that you know, having uh, an, a subject matter expert or an end user um, who understands how the data gets made, applied to make business decisions, we think that involving that person is absolutely essential which is why we've spent so much time and effort on user experience um, and, and, not, and, and not just trying to approach this in a way in which, you know, sort of the algorithms will sort of figure everything out on their own. Because I think when we've, uh, when we've seen that type of approach taken in the past, we recognize that it has uh, significant limitations. And so we really see the interplay between the algorithmic approach and the human uh, in the loop um, that, that ultimately we think is the winning formula. What type of trends are you predicting for 2019 for the democratization, democrat, democratization of data? Yeah. Well, you know, I think it, what's very interesting to us is that, uh, uh, you know, trends like recognizing that the data sets that you increasingly need to use to make better decisions are often not under your direct control. In fact, in many cases, they're not even behind your firewall. Um, increasingly, the data that you're going to go after is going to be open data, it's going to be third party data, it's going to be alternative data. So, you know, while increasingly organizations are trying to harness and make better use of their own data, the reality is that uh, leading organizations are starting to go well beyond what's under their direct control with their own data and starting to figure out how they can create data products out of data that's coming from, uh, you know, from these, uh, uh, sort, these alternative sources. And so we think that you know, the ability to have agility in onboarding that data and getting productive with it is going to be uh, super, super critical. And it's going to separate the winners from the losers as we start to think about kind of the next wave of, uh, of innovation that's going to be happening. Adam Wilson, CEO at Trifecta, Trifecta and Chief Data Wrangler. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your work. How can they do that? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and also if they're interested in uh, learning more about Trifecta, there's a free version of product that's available um, and that you can uh, be up and up and wrangling uh, your data within clicks. Sounds great. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.